Ouch. That mm. was a clip from 300, Rise of an Empire. But is the movie itself a shipwreck as well? <laughs> Here to tell us is our resident movie critic, Will Loper. Good morning, Will. Good Earl. morning. Well, you know, it, it's not it's not quite as good as the first one. It's yeah. definitely a step down, but chances are, if you like that one, mm -hmm. you'll like this one as well. So the movie begins with an eon of narration. Uh, maybe it was more like 25 minutes, explaining what's going on. And for this part of the movie, I was completely confused until I realized <laughs> about halfway through all this movie about is Persians versus Greek. It's really all there is to the movie, but it just feels the need to overly convolute the whole plot. And it's a shame because honestly, the biggest draw of this movie is mm -hmm. to see the ridiculously over the top fight scenes. And the movie does do a great job with those, even if the whole thing is on a green screen. Yeah. So you've got Thermistocles, he's played by Selvin Stapleton, the poor man's Gerard Butler, leading the good Greeks, and Ava mm -hmm. Green hamming it up as Artemisia. You might remind, remember her from Casino Royale, mm -hmm. Spawn yep. Girl. She's the villainess in charge of the evil Persians. And this CGI blood also stars mm -hmm. as a uh, supporting <laughs> role like as well. Blood. So. All right, so what did you? Well, uh, I, I've, the scientists who work here oh, at the Loeb mm -hmm. Report have developed a new highly accurate method oh, of rating movies. Really? Um, okay, mm -hmm. So if we, if we go with the storyline, yeah. terrible, uh -huh. one out of five. <laughs> Shirtless men fighting slow-mo, no shortage there, five out of five. Oh, okay. Rousing battle speeches off the charts. It's Braveheart times oh, 18. Oh, wow. my goodness. So that ends up with uh, about 2.2 2 out of five total. And I gave it the poor man Gerard Butler's head. My goodness. That's the rating. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> and so um, you're going to be coming back in the next hour. Coming back in the next hour, so okay. stay tuned. We're going to be looking at Mr. Peabody and uh -huh. Sherman. Which, by the way, those are the toys they're giving away in the Happy Meals now. <laughs> oh, are they? All right. Okay. Well. Yep, just discovered that this weekend. So, big hit. Cool. At <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see you yep, in an thank hour. You, Will. <laughs> Odysseus, what news do you bring? Someone left this for us! A present, nice. It looks just like our horse. Should I bring it inside? It'd be rude not to. Go! <laughs> I did not see that coming. <laughs> All right, that was a clip from Mr. Peabody and Sherman, one of this weekend's wide releases. It's a movie doggone good time or should you take pause before <laughs> seeing it here do you uh well let we'll let you decide mm -hmm. and our resident critic will Oper has seen it so so uh well i first i would just like to know who was banging on hollywood's door demanding that the world was in need of a movie based off a segment on a rocky and bullwinkle show from the 60s i, I love mean rocky and bullwinkle. hey nothing wrong with that <laughs> So I don't know. Well, now with that said, I actually I did kind of enjoy the movie. So Mr. Peabody, he plays yeah. a dog. He's a Nobel Prize winning canine who one day decides to adopt a boy. Peabody takes this boy Sherman on his time travel machine, which looks exactly like the one from Freebirds, by the way. He uses these trips as a learning experience, but often they go wrong, as when Peabody nearly gets the guillotine in the guillotine in the French Revolution. Now, what I like about this movie is that it is a bit of a light history lesson for kids. So mm -hmm. I mean, you have the flying around. The the bright colors, yeah. the jokes about butts, but what? these are real events <laughs> and people they're visiting. So, you know, the kids are kind of learning a little bit as they go, too. Movie is fast moving enough that, you know, if you find one of the jokes lame, this is packed with puns, you just gotta wait 10 seconds and there'll be about three Something more. Something else. Oh, good. Something <laughs> more. And, you know, there's plenty of adult humor and yep. pop culture references, too, so that makes it enjoyable for the parents as well, mm -hmm. which I always mm -hmm. like. At one point, uh, Sherman stands up for Peabody and says, I'm a dog. And someone else goes, I'm a dog, too. And then a guy walks in and says, I am Spartacus. You know, uh, uh, none of the kids are going to get it, but no, it's no. a great little That's pop culture line, reference. Though. So. They need yeah, something. You know, mom and dads, they need a little something there. You, you really do. <laughs> yeah, it flies over their heads, but, yeah. you know, it's it's bright enough that mm -hmm. the kids are enjoying it. And movie, it was more enjoyable than 300, ended up coming oh, in yeah? second place yeah. at the box office. So and I'm still left wondering where Peabody got his vocal cords. Is it like a radiation oh, spill yeah. or oh. it never explains. So what did you give this? So the rain, uh, punny wordplay, mm -hmm. plenty of that, four out of five, very enjoyable. History for kids, three out of five. Yeah. And Patrick Warburton's voice, always a good choice. That brings <laughs> us to our total rating of 3.5 oh. original Peabody's out of five, so. Okay. I like that. Okay. And I love Rocky and Bullwinkle, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Next week. Next week. Can you feel that? Hmm. It's the need for speed. Ah, here we go. So. 
Yeah, the guy from, uh, what's his name? What's that? From Breaking Bad, Aaron Breaking Paul. Breaking Bad, uh -huh. Aaron Paul. Yep. Yeah, he's on this. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. Yep, right. thanks.